Good morning. Now we're in 2 Kings chapter 6. You open up your Bibles. We'll begin. Um, and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. It's too confining. Um, there's some that say this. they might have been out in Qumran area. And they're saying, we need to go down to Jordan where it's wider open. There's actually trees. You know, we can... And um, so let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and let us take thence every man a beam. See, we can go cut trees down there, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And so Elijah said, Go on, you go ye. And then one said, uh, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I I'll go, I will go, I'll go with you. So he went with them, and they came to Jordan, and they cut down wood. And as they're making the building and everything, an accident happens. Now, Bronze Age, an axe would be worth uh, like a like a high dollar car, you know, high performance vehicle. And as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried, "It's the last master, for it was borrowed. It's costly." Um. It's kind of a picture of a lot of you know, churches, preachers, and things, believers. You know, we can get carried away with accomplishments, and then uh, we should never take our eyes off of the uh, tool that's doing the work. <laughs> and when you lose the axe head, all you got's a club, and you can't build anything with that. Um, so leave it to God to have a way out. Verse 6, And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. It rose up to the surface. Therefore he said, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand, like, uh, I'm sure, and then took it up. There's the axe head. Wow. Uh, so... Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Wait a minute. Did anybody tell Elisha? No, God told him. And then Elisha tells the king, Watch out, don't go over there. And the king of Israel sent to the place where the man of God told him and warned him of and saved him there not once nor twice. So he was just checking it out. So, oh, no, that's not it. They're there to kill us. If we, It's a trap. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. We keep setting ourselves up to get this guy. And it's like some, some little bird is telling him everything that we're doing, where we're going, what we're going to do. And so he called his servants and said to them, Will ye not show me which one of us is for the king of Israel? One of you is a spy. And one of his servants said, There's not a one of us, my lord, O king, but it's, it's Elisha, the prophet, that is in Israel. He telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. There is nothing in a man's heart or his mind or what he speaks that God does not already know. And he knows the even intentions of your heart. Well, verse 13, And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city all about. All their war wagons and all their men and the troops and everything. And Dothan is not a big city. This is mighty scary, and it's not unnoticed. And when, uh, this, verse 15, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, he sees this. He sees a host compass the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What are we going to do? This is overwhelming superiority. They are set up to get wiped off the face of the earth. They could easily just tear it up. Elisha looks at him and answered, 
Fear not, for they that be with us are more than that be with them. Really? And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And the Lord smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to the city of Samaria, the capital of Israel. And it came to pass, when they were coming to Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Uh-oh. And the king of Israel said to Elisha, when he saw this, my father, sh shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? I can kill them. I can kill them all. And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Would you smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword or with thy bow? You, you don't kill your captives. Okay, that's just, you don't do that. That didn't happen until really this, this last century. He says, set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. So he pre prepared them, instead of just bread and water, he prepared them a great provision for them. When they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And so they went to their master. And so these roving bands uh, from Syria came no more into the land of Israel. And so these were the raiders that came in. However, this didn't settle well because that was enriching Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria. So Ben-Hadad decides, it's time for me to go and attack him. I'll take care of business. Verse 24, And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all of his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 pieces of silver. And the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung sold for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king! I need your judgment! And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor, out of the wine press? So I, there's nothing left. We are, we are in dire straits. And the king said to her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her, On the next day, give thy son that we may eat him. And she has hid her son. Ugh. When the came to pass, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes. He passed by on the wall, and people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh he was mourning deeply then he said God do so and more to me if the head of Elisha the son of Shaphat shall stand on him this day he said, blaming the prophet blaming the wall but Elisha sat at his house and the elders sat with him and the king sent a man from before him uh, someone to kill him but ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elder, See how this son of a murderer has sent to take away mine head. Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door. Hold him fast to the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet right behind him? And while he had talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him. And he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait any, what, what should I wait for the Lord any longer? So, uh, the king comes behind, tells the messenger not to kill him, and um, instead they have a little conversation. And Elisha says, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 1 says, Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. 
Well, then a Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, <clears throat> Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? He didn't believe Elisha. Discounts it. Said God would have to put windows in heaven to dump this stuff out. There's no way this can happen. And Elisha says, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but you're not going to eat thereof. <laughs> And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate, and they said to one another, Why sit we here till we die? You know, if we say, uh, if we if we shall enter into the city, and then the famine is in the city, we'll, we'll die in the city. If we sit still here, we're going to die also. <clears throat> now therefore come, let us go out, fall unto the host of the Syrians. Now if they save us alive, then we shall live. But if they kill us, you know, we're going to die anyway. Let's go, let's go die. At least we have a chance. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. There were no humans. <clears throat> For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their donkeys, even the camp as it was, and they fled for their life. When these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, did eat and drink, and carried them silver and gold and raiment, and they went and hid it came again, entered in another tent, and carried it thence also, and went and hid it. And then they said one to another, oh, we're not we're not doing right. You know, it's never good to keep good news to yourself. Right? God gives good things so that you can give hope to others. And in this case, these lepers realize it, and they said, we do not well. This, this day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace he says, if we tarry till morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. Let's go report this. They came, called unto the porter of the city. Of course, the gates are closed. And they told him, saying, we came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man. The horses are tied up, the donkeys are tied up, the tents are, are as they were. So they called the porters, and they told her to the king's house within. And the king arose in the night and said <coughs> unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Therefore they are gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we're going to catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, Let uh, some take, I pray thee, five, five of the horses that remain which are left in the city. Behold, they are all as a multitude of Israel that are left in it. He said, Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of Israelites that are consumed. Let us send and see. So said, Basically, this pitiful show of horses is, is where we're at right now. It's all we got. There's, there's nothing left. We're, we're consumed to the point where there's nothing left. We've got to chance them. We've got to go try it. So they, therefore, they took two chariot horses and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. And they went after him all the way into Jordan. And lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. They left a trail behind them, fleeing. And the messengers returned and told the king, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. True prophet, true prophecy. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. <laughs> and the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. As the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down unto him, told him, you didn't believe, you had the sin of disbelief, and now you're going to hear it. You're going to see it. You're not going to taste thereof. You will die. You will mock it. 
He said, and it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for shekel and a measure of fine flour for shekel shall be tomorrow about this time at the gate of Samaria. And the Lord had answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. So twice now it's mentioned here, you have the prophecy. Twice, it's just emphasizing the fact that when you don't believe in God's provision for you, you do not believe in God, you know, careful. God loves you so much that he wants to take care of your every need. He wants to be your everything. He made us in his image. We are precious in his sight, and he cares for us, and he's not willing for us to fall away. He really, really desires our love, especially in times, hard times. I think of Job. You know, all that he lost, and yet still he worshipped God. It didn't matter. And God restored him more than he had before. Why? Because Job had faith. There was none faithful in all the world, like my servant Job, he said. And, of course, God was correct. Here, Elisha uh, just pointed out that having faith in God gives you rewards. Um, doing the right thing also has rewards, because these lepers were you know, enriched, but... They didn't end up with something bad happening to them because they kept the good news to themselves. Um, so let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your provision and your love and your care for us. We pray, Father, that you.